This is Saul Spiegelman, a famous biochemist who did something very wonderful in the 1960s. He set in motion an experiment that produced a truly stunning result, profoundly shaping how we think of the boundary between life and the non-living. Spiegelman and his group experimented with replicating RNA molecules, not replicating inside a cell, but replicating in a test tube. The RNA Spiegelman experimented with was the genetic code of a bacteriophage, a virus infecting bacteria. Under Sol Spiegelman's test conditions, this RNA took a whole new life of its own, transforming into something not capable of infecting bacteria anymore, but copying itself at record speed. This ultra-streamlined molecular copy machine, optimized for the harsh conditions of the test tube, became known as the Spiegelman Monster. And the Spiegelman Monster did an even more fascinating thing than replication, but more on that a little later. The Spiegelman Monster existed in the confines of the test tube, but its implications went far beyond a test tube. It may have taken some of the same, very first steps that all of life, everything living we see around us, might have taken billions of years ago. Sol Spiegelman did a series of groundbreaking experiments in the 60s, giving us clues about the very early stages of life on this planet. Spiegelman mixed RNA and a special kind of protein enzyme, RNA replicase, capable of copying RNA. When bacteriophage RNA and the RNA replicase enzyme were added to a liquid containing nucleotides, the building blocks used to make RNA, the replicase started copying RNA. Life replicates. Cells divide and replicate their DNA, so each daughter cell gets a copy of the genome. Some viruses, like the bacteriophage used by Spiegelman, have their genome in RNA form, and they infect cells to replicate that. In any case, information is passed on to the next generation by replication. What makes Sol Spiegelman's experiment so brilliant is that he put together lifeless molecules and recreated one of the essential requisites of life, replication. Of course, the molecules Spiegelman combined were biomolecules found in cells. But biomolecules themselves are not living, they are just molecules. The experiments by Sol Spiegelman gives us insights into what the very early stages of life may have looked like. The very early steps towards life and living cells may have been nothing else than an RNA molecule capable of replicating itself. RNA may have been the starting point of life on Earth, and it may have initially taken the role of both DNA and proteins. Cells use DNA to store information, and they use proteins to carry out different functions of the cell, like pumping sugar into the cell, moving stuff around, etc. DNA is well suited to storing information, and its double helix form is ideal for copying and accessing that information. But DNA's rigid structure isn't suited for much else. On the other hand, proteins can form 3D complexes of different sizes and shapes. They can change their shape, and they can interact with molecules of very different properties, like fats and water. But they are not good at replicating. DNA stores information in its foreign nucleotides, and RNA is similarly made of nucleotides and capable of storing information. But RNA is not restricted to a rigid, double helix structure like DNA, but can create fairly complex shapes and act out enzymatic roles like protein. These RNA enzymes are called ribozymes. Ribozymes have ancient functions in cells, like protein production at the ribosome, which is a complex mainly made of RNA. All this gives weight to the RNA world hypothesis of the early stages of life, where RNA ruled before DNA and proteins evolved. The RNA world hypothesis is the prevailing idea of how early life evolved. Making RNA copy itself in a test tube was a monumental accomplishment. But Spiegelman's monster left its mark in history for another reason. What made this beast of a replicator the beast it was, was what happened when the experiment was kept going. 
pushed beyond the limits of one test tube. With the first test tube becoming populated with RNA strands and running out of nucleotides, a change of test tubes was needed to keep the replication reaction going. When the RNA had replicated for a while in the first test tube, Sol Spiegelman took replicating RNA from the first test tube and added it to a second test tube. This second test tube had the same starting materials for replication, free nucleotides and the replicase enzyme capable of copying RNA. The RNA strands added from the first test tube started copying again in this new virgin tube. Again, the RNA replicating exponentially during the initial exponential growth period was added to a third test tube and so on. This way the fastest replicating RNAs were always transferred on to the next tube. The transfer was repeated 74 times. In the end, the RNA strand of around 3300 nucleotides added to the first test tube had been shortened down to an average of 550 nucleotides. The original RNA strand was nowhere to be seen, having been driven to extinction by shorter mutants. Through multiple test tube generations, the ultimate test tube survivor, the Spiegelman monster, had been born. With no other constraints on the RNA but to replicate as fast as possible, the molecules had evolved to become shorter and shorter. Shorter RNA strands replicate faster, outcompeting longer strands. They replicated 15 times as fast as the original sequence, not only becoming smaller but also increasing in the efficiency of replication. No cells, no life was present, but the evolution of molecules had taken place. In the test tube world, the bacteriophage RNA did not have to infect bacteria to replicate. It did not need parts of its genome coding for a protein to break open the bacteria, nor did it require the proteins making up the shell of the bacteriophage to protect its genome outside of the bacterial cell. The already minuscule genome of the bacteriophage had been reduced to the bare essentials needed for replication. In later tests, the Spiegelman monster grew even shorter, to around 50 nucleotides. This strand of 50 nucleotides was the shortest needed for the binding of the RNA replicase enzyme to the RNA. It was all that was needed for dominating the test tube world. Speed was essential, all else had been trimmed away. Variations on the original experiment have been conducted. In one experiment, Sol Spiegelman and Leslie Orgel, another pioneer of origin of life research, created an environment with a toxin ethidium bromide present. Under these conditions, the RNA evolved into a form most capable of resisting the detrimental effects of the toxin. The Spiegelman monster evolved in the artificial world of the test tube. It could not replicate if RNA replicase enzyme was not present, limiting its usefulness for describing the beginnings of life. In the early Earth, there would not have been an RNA replicase present to help things get started. While the Spiegelman monster does not fill in nearly all the blanks of the RNA world hypothesis, it has had a remarkable influence on the research on the beginning of life. The creation of a replicating and evolving population from a few non-living molecules opened up a world of possibilities. It may also have given us a glimpse into our very own early beginnings. Thank you for watching. I'm very honored that you've made it this far and that you've found my channel in general. Check out the other videos on this channel. There's lots more interesting stuff on the strange microscopic world living in us and all around us. Uh, these videos are a pain to make. I'm very thankful for all the support you guys are giving me. Leave a comment down below. I'm more than happy to read your comments and I'll do my best to answer all of them. And keep coming back. I'll try to do my best to upload these videos and work on them and get them better. So see you next time.